Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for October 2024. So on October 17th, we have our first of two energy shifts taking place, starting with the full moon popping off in Aries energy. So this full moon is a super moon, which means that it's in very close proximity to the earth, making it super bright. It is also known as the hunter's moon, again, illuminating the warrior type of spirit that needs to go out into the wilderness, really assert oneself in order to actually survive, so to speak. Again, the hunter going after particular, let's call them animals in order to feed thyself. It is about survival. It is about our ego selves. It's about where we have to assert ourselves, power and control in order to survive. So we have a lot to unpack here. First of all, this full moon returns us to the normal moon programming, meaning we've been under the influence of the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces up until this particular point. The full moon in Aries is then going to take over, but we're still under the influence of the new moon solar eclipse that took place in Libra energy up until the new moon in Scorpio, November 1st. So we're still very much in the eclipse energy. But of course, a full moon is a full illumination of hidden information, of details, of emotions, of seasons and cycles that now have to come to an end. A full moon is a releasing period, a purging period. And because we've been, typically speaking, having the Aries and Libra axis have these eclipse energies, because we had that taste of what the Pisces and Virgo axis is going to be, we didn't have an eclipse under this Aries energy. So this is a quote unquote normal moon. However, because it's a super moon, because it's bright, because it's in super close proximity to the earth, we're definitely going to be heavily influenced by this particular energy. So it's popping off at 24 degrees, 35 minutes, and it will be at its peak potency at 726 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to recommend that you download the Moon Guide. I'm also going to recommend, if you haven't already done so, download your October Energy Guide specifically for your Zodiac. This is going to illuminate to you where it is that these events are popping off and how they're going to impact and influence your life the most. And so we got to take a good look at what Aries energy is all about. And of course, it's the first sign of the Zodiac. It represents our ego selves. It is the spark, the fire, the flame that needs to be ignited, so to speak, in order for us to take action, to make moves, to assert ourselves really on a new path to go after new wants, new needs, new desires. Now, of course, still under the influence of this eclipse energy where relationships got rocked, this should be an illumination of what we have to do for ourselves, either to stand, hold the space, hold the line in order to advocate for ourselves, what we want, what we need, what we desire from the people from the world around us, or it is an energy where we are asserting ourselves to go after what it is that we want. Either way, this last year and a half of the nodes of the moon being on this Aries and Libra and axis has highlighted for us where it is that we have to break away from codependent relationships, where it is that we have to detach from giving our power away to other people, especially in relationship dynamics, and where it is that we have to stop allowing other people's thoughts, ideas, opinions, perspectives, perceptions, influence what we're doing for our own damn selves. This is a time for us in the Aries energy because we've brought this new version of self out to play. It is time to boss up, to stand very strong in who it is that we now are. Again, allowing more authenticity to flow through this ego avatar, this physical meat suit that of course is fueled by our soul and our spirit. So this is going to be, again, the polarization between the Aries and Libra and Axis. The Aries energy is about me. What do I want? The individual. What do I need? What do I desire? What do I have to do for myself? What is my mission? What is my purpose? Versus the Libra energy that, again, concerns us more with other people. What do we want? What do we need? What do we desire? What are they asking of me? What do we have to do for this next goal, this next mission, this next purpose? And so 
you know, where the Aries energy needs to kind of worry about our own damn selves, the Libra energy is, of course, dangling in front of us where it is that, again, we're still very uncomfortable standing on our own being authentic and true to our own damn selves, the want, need and desire to compromise, to negotiate, to meet others in the middle is going to be overwhelming and not saying that that's a bad thing. We do have to strike a balance between these two particular energies. But again, we have already perfected giving our power away to other people, putting other people's wants, needs and desires ahead of our own. We've already perfected allowing other people dictate for us what it is that we should be doing in our own damn lives. So now the energy, the influence needs to be about building our own selves up, this new sense of self, this new sense of identity, bossing up into a warrior type of mood and attitude in order to do the hard things that we know that we have to do in order to make a great change. So take, let's take a look at the fact that Mars is in his rulership over this Aries energy. And Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, she's in rulership over the Libra energy. Mars is currently in Cancer energy. Venus at the very last degree of Scorpio energy. What is the commonality there, you may ask? Oh yeah, that's right. They're both water signs. They are both water signs that Mars and Venus aren't used to being in. Mars in this cancer energy is hella defensive, hella protective, really in preservation mode to really fight, defend, protect whatever it is that we deem to be of worth and value, whatever it is that we've already built and created that we see value in preserving. Well, Venus, on the other hand, she's at the final degree of Scorpio energy. She will essentially be moving into Sagittarius energy just hours after this full moon pops off. And her time in the Scorpio energy has been doing the deep shadow work in order to recognize where there's been an emotional pivot, where she's been empowered to do what she needs to do for herself, putting her own wants, needs and desires back at the top of the list, and then equally analyzing who is still in existence in our current situation and circumstances that are encouraging, supporting us to do what we need to do for ourselves versus doing what we have been doing in order to make other people happy. And so again, we're starting to analyze where it is that we want to be happy. We want to feel safe. We want to feel secure. But we're realizing in particular relationship dynamics where people are just not contributing to those things. That is where a major shift, a major change needs to take place. And of course, our heart and our head not on the same page at all at this particular juncture, because of course, there is this full moon energy illuminating what we have to let go of where there's energy blockages preventing our heart and head from being on the same page. So there's a lot going on under this particular moon event as per usual. If you do download the moon guide, which I highly recommend you doing, you're going to realize that we are dominant in water and water means that there's a lot of emotions to process. There's a lot of, let's call it intuition washing over us. There's a lot of creativity as far as problem solving goes. There's a lot of imagination and fantasy as far as visualizing a new kind of dream vision goal for us to actually be manifesting and Equally, we're kind of divvied up between fire, earth and air supporting this emotional change, this emotional transformation. And so, you know, there's a huge list of, you know, pro aspects taking place, positive aspects that are gently and sometimes forcefully nudging us in the right direction. And there is a short but very potent list of growing pains, cons, if you will, that are highlighting the tension and the conflict. And especially when we take a look at Pluto sitting across the street from Mars, and we take a look at the sun and the moon sitting across the street from each other, and all of them being in cardinal energies, you best believe that that is going to be a major tension point. And when you draw those lines, what you kind of end up with is the crosshairs. And when we're talking about the hunter's moon, we're talking about focusing in on a new path, on a new direction, on a new goal, and holding that particular target in our mind's eye as we go ahead, start peeling back the layers of what we need to remove, what we need to close the door upon. So there's definitely lots of layers that we need to be pulling back, especially on our own damn selves under this particular influence. And of course, there is a lot of growing up and glowing up to do as we further anchor in this new version of self. 